Mr. Happy Living here, and I'm happy to be broadcasting from WITV7 in the beautiful Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina. Hey folks, I love medical doctors and authors and women's hormone experts and fellows of the American Congress of OBGYNs and people from every walk of life that have discovered their reason for being on this planet. And that's why I love Dr. Larissa Ferdinand. She's all those things and the founder and CEO of the Estrogen Doctor Company, where she's combined advanced medical technology, genetic testing, evidence-based interventions, and proactive care to create amazing health and anti-aging results for her patients that she calls the future female. Hey, Larissa, welcome to the Something Significant Show. Glad to be here, Matt. Wonderful. So get us started by telling our audience what you're doing these days to leave your mark of significance on the world. I can say that literally in like two, two specific areas for me. And one actually is being more present. I don't know. I don't know about you. I feel definitely in this past year, it has kind of ejected us in different areas, you know, different pivots. And this has been a year where number one, the transition of being like whatever season I'm in, being very grateful for that season. And that's being more present with my family, present with my purpose, present with the transition of changes. And number two, what you've already kind of mentioned about, you know, just guiding more into this uh, integrative space when I work with women and um, helping them really launch into perimenopause and beyond with greater ease, uh, a better look at that whole body connection and not just one single thing, what I like to call no one trick pony. And you were talking about seasons and you meant the seasons of the year or the seasons, seasons of, life? of life. Yeah, seasons, yeah, of, seasons life. of life. Yeah, for sure. And everybody has their season, right? Yep. So that's been, uh, and I like to say whatever season that you've been placed or where God has placed you in. And for me, it's uh, a sewing season, you know, understanding that this is um, definitely something that has been reaped over time and things that will be reaped later. So that's a, that's a great way to look at it. And I, I feel the same way. If you just kind of accept each stage in life and don't try to cling to the past or, or get into the future too quickly, mm -hmm. then you, it's for me, it's just, it's, it's awesome. Every year is a, just a wonderful experience. Absolutely. So, so take us back in time. What's your earliest memory of when you knew you were gonna become a doctor and more specifically, an OBGYN? Well, if I'm truly being honest, you know, I was one of those children that, you know, you kind of go from different careers, honestly, for a while. So I didn't kind of smack dab myself on the doctor thing until maybe around high school. Um, I went to a math science magnet. I'm from Louisiana, I like to claim I'm a Louisiana girl. Um, by heart and mind, even though I've been a Floridian technically for a little while. <laughs> but um, so kind of landed there in high school and transitioned to college where I'm going after this, you know, pre-med curriculum, biology. And no lie, I had one of those aha moments where you get that feel like, oh my God, I hope I don't disappoint my parents. I hope I don't disappoint myself. You know, it, yeah, it was one of those times. But I bet on myself and, you know, it was good and got into med school, but really did not see myself being an OBGYN. Actually, I went from wanting to do orthopedics mm. or some type of surgical field to even family medicine. And then during the last years of medical school is where you do your clinical rotations. And I did OBGYN and never thought about it. Like literally everybody thinks that it was something I just wanted to do. And it just felt right. It was natural. It still married some of those other interests I had with continuity, ability to do surgery, um, some other things. But, you know, I've even evolved from that, which is interesting. But it wasn't until truly um, end of med school, I guess, last two years of med school. Mm, and it just kind of happened. Yeah, it was more it natural. Was like I knew it when I was in it. It was kind of yeah. strange, yeah. you know, like, hmm, I didn't even think about this one. <laughs> interesting. All right, so let's look forward. Mm -hmm. about 50 years or so, because I know you're part of a group that believes human beings can look, feel, and live optimized lives up until like 120 years or more. Mm -hmm. So describe how you'll be impacting the world 
in 2070 and beyond? What's that look like for Dr. Larissa? You know, I had to do a calculation in my head. So I'm going to be like 94, right? <laughs> uh, so you can do a calculation from there. My birthday's yeah. in July. So I'm a July baby. Um, and so I couldn't, uh, when, I, when I hear that question, literally, it's, I couldn't help but to think, like, I feel, I feel like no matter what, I want to be passing a baton. Like whatever season I'm really sewing in right now that I'm passing a baton because I've always felt that way when it came to my parents, my grandparents and being an African-American woman and knowing that they um, they lived in a time that was very segregated. You know, education was big and for to be a, you know, to somehow mm -hmm. to a physician in the family, that was a huge deal. So now translating, what does that look like now? The world and the canvas of the world is so much different, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and really looking in that longevity vantage point makes a difference. And especially for uh, women in my community or just women, period, because we're just impacted more than men are. And sometimes, you know, twice as much when we're talking about autoimmune and uh, disease, thyroid problems, cardiovascular disease, as we age, you know, these pivotal times when hormones are like, making women feel like they're having out of body experiences, really, you know? And um, so when I see myself, I hope that I'm passing the baton or that I've started to make these legacy changes because like you said, we're amongst a tribe or villagers who really believe some of these things start in the womb. Some of these transgenerational changes start in the womb. And here I am at OBGYN and I have to start, you know, just really thinking in that direction. And especially when it comes to women, since we're so much more impacted and this actually this week is black maternal health week and mm -hmm. knowing that when it comes to women of color getting more impacted with health disparities when it comes to pregnancy complications to longevity health outcomes and all of that and then just women just that whole umbrella so i really feel like hopefully i'm passing the baton hopefully i'm being still a teacher of wisdom hopefully i'm looking good all right, now, come on. I'm, I'm one of those people very real with you. And so 90 something and beyond just still yeah. kicking independently, right? Mm -hmm. So, and being able to still do that. <laughs> That's great. And, and I think that I, I turned 60 this summer and I think the trick is- Happy birthday. If you, if you, thank you. If you just keep doing it, mm -hmm. you can keep doing it. Yeah. And you know, so, so far knock on wood, every year gets better. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I love the longevity effort. Mm -hmm. And if you keep your mindset on that, it really takes a lot of pressure off because I got a lot of time left. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, it's engineering. And that's the mm -hmm. thing, learning in this space, knowing that even that thought alone is yep. engineering something on a very basic cellular level that cascades or is a catalyst and so many other mechanisms. So just not having a limited belief changes your trajectory. And that's something. <laughs> yeah. They don't talk about that. You understand that. Like they don't talk about that in mainstream, do they? No. No, no they don't. <laughs> okay, so I define significance as doing things you love in places you love, with people you love, and creating something of value to others. It's doing and it's giving. But as you know, you can't give from an empty cup. So what are your personal practices, whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, financial, emotional? What do you do? What are the things you do to increase your capacity so you can take good care of yourself and your family and still have more to be a giver? Um, I love this. Just, just know I love this. And I love your equation, by the way. I'm a fan, big fan. Mm -hmm. um, the word capacity. So I, I'm building into an integrative space where I use the word power a lot. And literally within the definition of power is expanding your capacity and really understanding being instead of just doing. And um, so even in this space of time now of really curating that, my daily practice is usually start with, um, you know, what my oxygen mask look like. That's what I like to say. Mm -hmm. So I can give to others. Mm -hmm. um, I love the Calm app. I'm one of those upgraded membership people. Um, and I love doing that in the morning because I'm one, I'm a Hormones are optimize your hormones, optimize your life. And I know I have a surge of cortisol. Like I'm used to like being in that lifestyle that, you know, I've done more stuff at seven o'clock than some people have done all day. And so I know that getting, you know, kind of that settled moment, um, guided meditation, 
acts of gratitude. And I usually do a, um, a set devotional, whatever I've chosen and what I feel like the spirit has moved me to do. Like even now it's about being a praying wife to my husband, you know, or mm-hmm. how can I be there more as a spouse? And um, I try to do something. I'm a workout in the morning type person, you know, for those who can, I usually recommend that. And then I'm like anybody else, you know, it's a dash of, you know, child getting here, but I've learned, like I said, the B, you know, like if I'm in the car, all right, we're going to have a conversation. We're going to have, you know, like not thinking about three, four steps. What I'm going to do after I drop them off, you know, which is something that we often do. And so what that translates to when you inspire yourself to make those transitions and those leaps, you end up showing up better for others. And it's like, you become your own tribe and village keepers in a way, you know, you, you've inspired this transition. So therefore it inspires others to do the same or something similar for whatever that looks like in their season of life. So. Very good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's take a commercial break because I want to tell everyone about three things. Mm -hmm. A brand new online course called the philosophy of you and your inspired life how it helps people to discover their purpose and design the life they were meant to live. And three, how every enrollment using promo code WITV7 will save them a hundred bucks and support a great big donation to our wonderful host, WITV7. Mr. Happy Living here. I love good things made for good people. That's why I love Happy Living's online e-course. It's an eight week long deep dive into you and the inspired life you want to live. The life you were put here on this earth to live. The one that you and only you can live. Eight weeks of lectures and ideas and topics and supporting materials and powerful self-improvement tools all designed for you, all designed to help you create the tools and the power and the confidence you need to discover your purpose and to discover the life you were meant to live and to feel incredibly inspired and motivated to decide you will live your life to its fullest. It's all designed to help you create the unique and distinct philosophy of you and your inspired life. Go to happyliving.com, select our e-course, and save a hundred bucks with promo code WITV7. And for every enrollment, I'll donate another hundred bucks to WITV7. For $300 in about 30 hours, I promise you'll never, ever be the same again. And we're back, and this is the Something Significant Show, and I'm Matt Gersper. Hey friends, to be happy, really, truly, deeply happy, you gotta find a way to find your purpose. You gotta find a way to live the life you were meant to live. So I invite you to join me on a journey of discovery and exploration with our e-course, The Philosophy of You and Your Inspired Life. We're ready to begin eight weeks of working on you and the life you are meant to live. And now back to my inspiring guest, Dr. Larissa Ferdinand. Mm-hmm. She's living the life she was meant to live, helping women be more productive, decisive, powerful, and sharp as they continue, continue the pursuit of the lives they were meant to live. So Larissa, tell us why you call your clients powerful future females. It has to go back to that capacity, right? The expander capacity. And oftentimes we may ravel ourselves into just things. And I like to call comparisonology. You know, that's one of those things Mm -hmm. now where, you know, between social media and what you see out there, it's so easy that we can beat up ourselves, you know, like kind of self-sabotage. And it's interesting because sometimes, well, I'm gonna say majority of the time, some of the background we don't recognize could be just the roller coaster of our hormones, you know, mm-hmm. just not understanding that connection of mind, body, spirit, 
and hormones. So uh, being able to connect with women on the level of understanding from my traditional background and um, what I've learned so much and trained so much, but really extending from that. Because after I've seen thousands of women throughout the whole canvas of their reproductive life, I started, you know, not only seeing patterns, but just the uniqueness of it, you know, that no matter what, it's not a pill for every ill, you know, there's always something beyond it. Um, and most importantly, with that curating the future female is still someone that wants to connect to their world, connect to themselves. They want to still embody and embrace, you know, their world and their passions. You know, you still dream, you know, you don't never feel like you don't have a dream or want something better for your life. But seeing how that connects to evolving technology and uh, embracing that for good and then realizing, you know, with that uniqueness, don't put us in a container, you know, don't put us in a cookie cutter, you know, and um, that has been something that really expands women's capacity, you know, mm -hmm. just those belief systems that are not that, that limited, right? Yeah, I love it. Hey, folks, Larissa says that we need more, of, what we need more of these days is teaching, inspiring, and empowering so that others can make their own transformations. And of course, I couldn't agree more. My second book is all about transformation. Turning Inspiration into Action explores the idea that big transformations and discovery of purpose often come from devastation, addictions, death, disease, disaster. Some big crisis shakes your life, but I've used a happier way and discovered the path to purpose in my life with inspiration. So Larissa, was there a specific moment or a situation when either devastation or inspiration revealed to you the purpose you were meant to live? No matter what, my most authentic and true self is always going to be. I've been one that had to always had, have a right hook or like literally one of those <laughs> devastating things that happen that, you know, your life just, you know, needs that kind of hard drive reboot, you know? And however, keeping a lot of those inspiring things um, behind you as well, like understanding that there's something greater. And so I'll start with the inspiration piece. Inspiration piece have always been kids. You know, I have a six year old son and he's, and um, there's a guided meditation that helped remind me that, you know, children, they are the most curious beings. You know, mm -hmm. they, they live with a lot a fearless activity than they do fear. You know, they're the total opposite sometimes, as, you know, as us as adults. And that's inspiring because it helps you understand like there's still possibility here. There's things that I can still expand within my capacity and my purpose. And so um, for me and the devastation or I don't, um, don't necessarily want to call it, I like to call them my right hooks, like right. wake oh, up calls, was, you know, my right hook, my wake up calls, yeah. my aha moments. Yeah. And um, I love what I, I love what I do. Um, mainstream traditional medicine served this purpose for me, but at the same time, um, it was a friction of spirit for a while and um, seeking other additional certification, you know, cause you learn from your, your, from your patients, you learn from the women you're in front of. And it was always something like, God, it, it's something else there. Let's look into this. And you may not learn that under all the covering of medical school. Like you, you learn to be a lifelong longer, learner and just depending on what direction you take. And so that was one of mine, like it was for a while where if there was a matter of ideas or things I want to put on a table, understanding that, you know, the village or tribe that I was around really wasn't necessarily seeing it that way. And so over time, like your flame kind of dies down and you keep seeking something else and so getting more certain. Oh, go ahead. You wrote about that in, in, the, in your chapter, and you mm -hmm. said that your internal flame dimmed and you were experiencing this friction between your spirit and your life. Mm -hmm. what, what was it that, that lifted you out of that? Was there a moment or was there a realization when you, you got your flame back? What was, what was that inflection point? That's what I love. That, that I, I love that. So you're right. What was that actual inflection point? So I will say I probably had little mini wake up calls, but oftentimes we have failure to launch. I love to you know, say it that way, just a failure to launch. And the inflection point had to do when someone 
you know, necessarily want to put in a container where I wasn't able to expand in the space that I was growing more in, you know, actually increasing debt, trying to learn more and add more value to other people's lives. And you just get to a point where that breaking point like that, that uh, stick on the camel's back well, where- For you though, what was your- Oh, last point? year, June, uh, making the decision to leave my private practice at the time mm -hmm. and understanding that, you know, like, this, we're in the middle of a pandemic and, uh, you know, as a frontline worker and I'm still a frontline worker in certain aspects because it's still a part of me, you know, and that's mm -hmm. the thing. You don't necessarily have to totally negate, negate what's a part of you because uh, it's still ingrained in you, but it's just a difference of how you want to show up. You know, you want to show up in a way where you're surrounded by people who think the same way, who are on that same um, perspective, the village keepers and understanding that to really be was resetting my priorities, you so know? You, so you left the, the structure yes. of your practice and everything you had learned in medicine mm -hmm. and launched out on your own as an entrepreneur mm -hmm. because you weren't feeling you could be off your full self within the system. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Oh, you gave me goosebumps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. And how scary did that feel and how awesome did it feel at the same time? Um, it's what we used to call in the surgery world, anal sphinctering moments. So you had those. <laughs> I don't know okay. a lot of medical terms, but I think oh, okay. I got no, that. No, it's, it's very common sense terms, but we'll say <laughs> it's literally that, anal sphinctering moments. When you're in surgery, you're just like, Ooh. but um, uh, so it's that, but it was still inspiring because at that time, a lot of things had shifted. I mean, I was at the time doing virtual school with my son. So just being present, like I said, inspiration of your children and seeing, you know, like, God, I've missed a lot, you know, running here, running there. Mm -hmm. um, and seeing that um, sometimes just looking at it always as that, that cup that really is full, but can't give no more from the cup that you've been given because it has become, you know, empty, like you said. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was a mixture of those inspirations and those frightening moments of, you knew this was happening. You know, you had a failure to launch. Now you just need to yeah. launch. So good for you. I yeah. love it. Okay. So we've talked about capacity and purpose. And when you combine those two, I like to say the sky's the limit. It's capacity plus purpose equals happy. Mm -hmm. But I know the real magic of life comes from adding the fourth element of significance, which is doing work that creates value to others. So my happy formula is this. Capacity plus purpose plus giving equals really, truly, deeply happy. So Larissa, it's not just giving that's magical, but it's giving from living in your purpose. That's where the magic is. So tell us in your launch, how does it make you feel when you help a client become, as you say, the CEO of the bedroom, the boardroom, and her home by transforming her life and becoming more productive, more powerful, and more performance-driven with less effort? Tell us, how does giving to others from living in your purpose make you feel? It feels right. It feels joyous you know, and those moments so randomly of someone that, cause it's more of that connection, you know, they have my number, you know, they text me like, you know, I made a decision today and I heard you in the back of my mind. And just the way I reacted to that was not my old self, you know, it, and I feel better because I showed up more for me. And that's the thing, when you show up more for yourself, it is me right now and really, I'm not saying that I didn't live authentically, but it's like when you evolve, you know, when you change. And I love it how, um, are you familiar with Debbie Ford and the right questions? Mm -hmm. And it's, um, and it explores just, you know, when you're making decisions, when you're going through these uh, things in life, okay, is it something that's for long-term gratification, if it's long-term fulfillment or short-term gratification? Is it something that di uh, dips more in your, what your divinity shows you or your humanity? Is this something where it's going to help um, you empower yourself in, um, in one way versus self-sabotage, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of things that I create that are transformational really go along those premises because we have to ask ourselves those questions. And so when you do, it, it shows up in the work that you do, 
you know, and people will see it and you keep practicing, you know, because it's a new art form in a way. We always talk about the, the greatness of medicine is the mixture of art and science. And it's the really art form that transforms. So give, give me just a little bit more on that. The difference okay. between the old Dr. Larissa working in the system mm -hmm. and doing good mm -hmm. and helping women improve their health mm -hmm. and the new, the new you living your authentic self and doing mm -hmm. things your way. Mm -hmm. when, when you give the difference between those, you felt mm -hmm. good here, but you felt there's a difference that we're exploring on this show that yeah. I want our audience to understand. And you just yes. smiled it. That's the difference. <laughs> Try to explain. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, um, and that's the thing you, you read and get inspired, you know, by other people. And um, it's, I think his name is Gary Hendricks. He has a book, Leap of Faith, and it talks about the zone of excellence and the zone of genius. And that's the thing, you're good at the excellent, but when you move and push past it, when you're in like your zone of, you know, genius, where, you know, like you said, the magic happens, mm -hmm. you have the, you know, the more inner capacity, purpose giving. And so I still, that's the thing, I never forget you know, the foundation, because that's still a part of me, because I still feel like traditional medicine has its place. There's still some things and methodologies that I use every day, yeah. but now there's some icing on top. You mm -hmm. know, there's some goodness, you know, wrapped in it because I have more time. It's not a typical office visit or 10 to 15 minutes. I don't have to settle for, you know, annual woman's visit. I'm able to create more transformational change for a woman where we're discovering more, we're designing. I love to use genomics and genetic things that would not uh, you know, give me that capacity within um, that particular container before. And to really give more strategic time efforts that's not dictated by, okay, this is what your insurance will pay for and this is right. what your insurance won't pay for. So when you, you know, you marry all of those things, yes, I have a smile on my face. Yeah, so, I yeah. love it, I mm -hmm. love it. Mm -hmm. Very good, great stuff. Mm -hmm. So let's wrap things up with a quick lightning round. I'll read one of my very favorite quotes and then you respond telling us what it means to you and just the very first thing that comes to your mind. I love this, love it. This one's from Albert Einstein. We cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. One of my favorite quotes, I actually use this in the speaker's segment, so that I think it. So the first thing that comes in mind is the pure definition of insanity, right? Keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result. And that's the first thought that always brings. You have to curate something different for your lives because that particular problem needs a different and a better real solution. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. From Lao Tzu, to the giver comes the fullness of life, to the taker, just an empty hand. Oh, absolutely. Um, when, you, when you give, it's like freedom in a way, you mm -hmm. know? It's, it, it unleashes something where it is the form of self-sacrifice. And most importantly, it's a form of, you know, not worrying about other things, you know, mm -hmm. and knowing that whatever you're giving is of value. And that's so important. It's the secret of life. Mm -hmm. um, from Voltaire, wherever my travels may lead, paradise is where I am. Oh, I think of peace. Yeah, because there's certain peace that we're always seeking. So whether it's traveling to a location or traveling to a section of your home like I am, sometimes mm. when I'm running from my six-year-old and to my chair and a cup of coffee, I've traveled somewhere and it's my little piece of paradise. There you go, I <laughs> love it. Okay, from Goff, whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now. Absolutely, it's nothing better than now. And um, <clears throat> you, can, you can spite yourself a lot and you can doubt and all that, but just do it. Take the leap. Sometimes yeah, he's absolutely. talking about your failures to launch, isn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just get it going. Get it going. Okay, the Larissa. Um, this has been awesome, but our time's running out here. Just take a minute or two and share any parting remarks or comments that you'd like to leave with our audience. Great. Um, this has been a great experience. Um, just having a conversation like this, you know, 
lights my face up. But if I had to put any remarks out there, it definitely, I want to put in that space of there's always an opportunity to expand greater than what you see in front of you. And oftentimes it starts in the mind, you know, mm -hmm. just believing or having a more limitless belief, um, but taking those next steps to really reach the transformation that you want. And oftentimes it's not going to be, you know, immediately in front of you, we're tired, we got so many things going on, but understand there is a capacity of when you're working or inspired by your purpose or putting your own oxygen mask on, filling your cup, you will be able to give more, but more to those who you love because I'm, a, I'm always gonna take it for the women, just like hormones, we're the curators, the negotiators, we're pretty much, hey, we make the magic happen. And if we build health and wellness from a different vantage point for ourselves, mm -hmm. we know automatically we're going to have a healthier world. We're going to have a healthier family, communities or whatever. So to me, I'm always going to be the future female champion mentor. And it starts with really understanding and, and lying in that purpose and making sure that women are inspired to do the same. Fantastic. Thank you, Larissa. And now folks, it's your time. It's time for you to show a little love to our broadcast host. And you know, every little bit matters. So if you can hear my voice and you are inspired by today's show with Dr. Larissa Ferdinand, please donate what you can to WITV7. They're a 501c3 charity on a mission to educate, empower, and encourage. They do good works with your kindness. Larissa, I love your message of the future female. And I loved reading your amazing chapter in Codes of Longevity where you write about the future female mindset of health. And you introduce three power tools to lengthen health span and lifespan. Uh -huh. Brain, sleep, and a DNA diet that creates limitless willpower. Uh -huh. And I appreciate you for sharing your voice, your voice here today to teach and to inspire and to empower us all. Thank you, I appreciate it. As always, I wanna thank WITV7 for hosting and promoting our show so we can keep interviewing inspiring guests like Larissa and reaching folks out there ready to create their own extraordinary lives. A special thank you to our sponsors for the month of April, the philosophy of you and your inspired life and happy living. Remember, I'll donate a hundred bucks for each and every enrollment for the entire month to WITV7. So tell all your friends too, just go to happyliving.com, select our e-course and enroll today as if your absolute best life depended on it. And most especially, thank you viewers and listeners. You'll find links to websites and social media and all things Dr. Larissa Ferdinand. Find her, friend her, buy, her, buy our book, Codes of Longevity, in which both Larissa and I and many others have written chapters about how you can unlock your potential to look, feel, and live life optimized. Oh, get her free guide, 10 surprising facts about women's hormones, and even schedule a 30-minute future female power-up discovery call. And from me to you, dear friends, I love you and I want you to be happy. We do what we do at the, on the Something Significant show to inspire you to live your life to its fullest, to believe as I do that a better self is always possible today and every day for the rest of our lives. That inspired life that you've been dreaming about, it's calling you. It's calling you to be bold, to get on with it, to start moving along your path, the special one to your dream, your unique and distinctive journey, because that's where you're gonna make your mark of significance on the world. Absolutely. So till next time, I'm Matt Gersper. You are awesome. And this is the Something Significant Show. Bye. Thanks for having me. And we're out.